go. Quick, get to the bottom right. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little lower. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You gave me I a bottle of milk. I had my ears. Hey, everybody. This is a bottle of milk <laughs> that Rainy gave me. Um, it's it's mouse milk. It's it's delicious. And I have myself a little little drink of it now. Mmm, yum. Delicious. Full of all those good vitamins and nutrients. All those good vitamins and nutrients. All right. So we got a bird of the day to talk about. And, um, well, I always ask my guests, and, and you said the sandpiper, and unfortunately I've already done that. You said ravens yes. are your favorite. I mean, I did ravens a long time ago. Great bird. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I am biased. My mom's a raven, so. Yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> um... <laughs> And then I thought maybe a cockatoo since, you know, pirates have parrots and stuff. But mm -hmm. no. Then I looked at you. What are you? You are a mouse. <laughs> uh -huh. So you are a mouse with big old honking titties. I so sure do. So, of course, the bird of the day needs to be a tit mouse. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the bridal tit mouse. I didn't get to know what the bird of the day was before we started, so I'm so I'm I'm smitten. This is grand. Yes, the bridal <laughs> titmouse. Look at this a little cutie. Look Majestic, at it. an adorable little bird. <laughs> I love the slide of feathers on top. Oh yeah, yeah. That's one of the uh, <laughs> one of the core features of the bridal titmouse is their beautiful little crests. So these guys are tiny little fellers, only four and a half to five inches long, and that's from tip of beak to tip of tail, so it's pretty small. Oh. Their wingspans are pretty decent at 8.5 to 10 point or to 10 inches. Uh, uh, they don't weigh too much, 0.3 to 0.4 ounces, very, very oh, wow. light. And as is typical with a tiny little bird, their average lifespan is only 2.1 years. But, you know, for small passerines like this, that low average lifespan is due to an incredibly high infant mortality rate. You know, mm -hmm. the overwhelming majority of uh, these uh, bridal titmouses, uh, they don't survive their first year. Because, mm -hmm. as you can see, they can live up to 13 years old. So, it's, you know. Yeah, it's, it's actually happens. pretty common for mice in general, honestly. So, it, it tracks. Yep. Uh, as you can see, their range there is they are mostly a Mexican bird, but you will also find them in little bits of Arizona and mostly New Mexico. Yeah, just mm -hmm. kind of in there. So they don't have, a, don't have a really broad range, and they also do not migrate. So they're pretty much just going to mm -hmm. be there the whole time. That's, that's where they live. Um, okay. They are a passeriform, so a passerine, which is pretty obvious. Pretty much all small little perching birds are passerines. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we go. They are in the genus Balophus, which is the uh, genus which is all titmice. Uh, and there are six titmice species. Previous bird of the day, we did the tufted titmouse. They're more in the Aww. eastern United States. Also, uh, thanks for the follow, Blitzmaster. Appreciate that. So, let's learn a little bit about them. Look at that little cutie. Look at that little cutie. Um, the males Aww. and the females are pretty much... Pretty much the same. The males have slightly more vibrant feathers, but they both have the crests, pretty similar coloration, same size. But yeah, the males are just going to have a little bit more vibrant, brighter whites, darker blacks, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, they are monogamous for a season, but it's just like every year the female is going to find a new mate. But also they're monogamous in terms of like, you know, staying near each other, living near each other, but they're not monogamous in terms of who they sleep around with. And as is true with most small birds, um, the males are often raising children that are not biologically their own. Hmm. But at the same time, there's probably another male who is raising their babies. They 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 just it's sleep kind of communal a lot. care. Yeah. yeah, they're not like birds of paradise that are like the where the females are like super, super like you know, picky about who they mate with. It's, not, you know, the males... I was like, you got a pulse? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the males... Well, the, I mean, they, they're not going to mate with just anyone, but, you know, if they got a good song, they got some good feathers, they do the mm -hmm. little mating dance, uh, but it's mostly their song. The song, you know, the males will sing a little song, and if the females hear that song, you're like, oh, he's got some pipes on him. All right, I'll go, I'll go over there and see what's up. Mm -hmm. um, and then once they... 
once she chooses a mate, they are going to search for uh, little hooks and, you know, nooks and holes and trees and stuff. They uh, like to actually go where woodpeckers used to, like if a woodpecker makes a hole in a tree, they'll often go into there, or if like okay. some other bird has made a hole in a tree. But they also, if you put up a nest box, they like nest boxes. Basically, they like enclosed places with a small hole to get in. It's it's safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're going to, the males and the females are both going to gather materials, very small twigs, moss, uh, fluffy stuff. You know, they're going to make a nice, nice little cozy mm -hmm. nest within that hole. And then they're going to lay five to nine eggs per clutch, and they might have two clutches per year. So I was talking about their lifespan is so low because of the low infant mortality rate. Well, a breeding couple may make anywhere between 10 to 20 eggs in a season. So mm. if 70% of them die, that's still six babies making it to adulthood to breed on. So mm -hmm. there you go. You know? Yeah, so not really a popular shortage kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they have the strategy of make lots of babies and know that most of them are going to die. Unlike the condor, which is like, we're going to have one baby every two years, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure that baby survives to adulthood. Yeah. Makes sense. Different different strategies. Uh, but of course, obviously, the titmouse is doing a little better population-wise than the condor, so it's up Just to you which strategy works better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Both parents are going to take turns incubating the eggs. Uh, the females do a little bit more, but the males do spend some time in there. So lady can go get her dinner. And then once mm -hmm. the uh, babies are born, both parents are going to take turns feeding the baby. So that's that's good. That's nice. Um, oh, and then well done. And then they're usually going to fledge between uh, two to three weeks after being born. And they'll stick around with their parents until, you know, the winter time and then the next year, they go off and, you know, when they're one year old, they can have their own babies. Can you imagine having babies when you're only one year old yourself? That... It's like babies... Yeah, okay, speaking as a mouse, it's not entirely uncommon, but uh, it's uh, definitely one of those... I'm I'm the outlier of amongst, amongst my fellow mice. Well, that's, that's sure. true. Like, don't mice... <laughs> aren't mice... Aren't female mice capable of giving birth when they're 90 days old? <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's... Yeah, we well, we mature early. <laughs> yeah, well, different evolution. I'm technically considered an old crony by my my mouse uh, sides. <laughs> oh, I've more than double the life expectancy of a crow, so don't. <laughs> 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 Look, when you become a VTuber, you know things are different. Things are different. Yeah. Yeah. Also, your, but you know your your anatomy is a little different than most uh, mice that I've seen. Yeah, That's... no, I but bi biologically and the fact that I can even speak um, is all actually due to a delightful fluke of chance. I, I can speak because of my magic twig. It's very important. I got I got bopped by a misaligned awakened spell. Yeah, a lot of VTubers <laughs> have magical origin stories, don't they? I mean, it makes sense though. Yeah. We're magical people. It's got precise somehow. Okay, there we go. All right. I got a little video one. It's very short, but it's Ooh. cute. Look at this little guy sitting in your feeder. Oh, so cute. Yep. So I told you it was short. Precious. But no, I don't fast. replay it. Ah, <laughs> uh, there was okay. I did a YouTube search for the bridled titmouse, and there was like three videos, and the other two had like voiceover and were longer and were like ed other educational videos. I'm like, I'm not going to play uh. somebody else's educational video, but I will. And then like every other result was a tufted titmouse. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not talking about the tufted titmouse. I'm talking about the bridled titmouse. We like, you know, bridled. <laughs> they're, they're bridled because, you know, I guess maybe because their face feathers almost kind of look like a bridle. Yeah, I was gonna say it does have something of a bridal uh, effect to it with the with the line across the mm. eye and whatnot. Yeah. Now, you ever worn a bridle? I have, but I'm usually <laughs> the one that's holding uh, holding the reins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It works. <laughs> um, now these guys use typically they don't live solo or in pairs. They're usually only gonna be around. They like they live in small flocks. So there's gonna be you know anywhere between like six to twenty of them that'll live in little groups together. Oftentimes they're family. You know, so the juveniles might stay with their parents for a few years. And, you know, because there's, there's safety in numbers. 
you know, mm -hmm. lots more eyes to spot predators. Yeah, when you're that small, you kind of need to cluster together. Mm -hmm. um, and then they actually join mixed flocks of other birds in the wintertime, which is interesting because they're non-migratory. Usually that's the thing that you see with migrating birds, but in the winter mm -hmm. months when it's a little bit colder and maybe there's just less vegetation, they do tend to be in larger flocks that might include finches, warblers, you know, other oh. little birds. Hmm. Or chickadees, which chickadees are tits. These guys are tits, chickadees are tits. But uh, oh. we usually, we call we call tit mice tits in the United States, but chickadees are a type of tit that we don't call tit for some reason. I yeah, know no, just called ch call chickadees. Huh. Yeah, they're called chickadees. But yeah, like you look at a chickadee <laughs> and then you look like at a blue and yellow tit and you're like, oh, yeah, other than their color of their feathers, bio, you know, their structure is pretty much exactly the same. Mm -hmm. You know, they just got those cute little beaks. I love their little beaks. Look at those cute little mm -hmm. beaks. Those are so cool. They're small. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. for for safety and for foraging, they spend most of their time in trees with lots of vegetation and growth because they can kind of hang out near the center of the tree and it keeps them well hidden and it keeps them, um, you know, like I said, hidden, safe, but also that's where they do most of their foraging because these little guys are omnivores. They like nuts, they like berries, but they also like small insects. So, you know, mm -hmm. if there's like ants and crickets and stuff crawling up a tree, they'll hop around and grab themselves a little bit of a snack. Yeah. They're they're pretty opportunist. Walk, walk along and just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they like pine trees a lot. They like having like those little pine nuts and stuff and... You know, mm -hmm. pretty much anything they can get their uh, their little beaks on. They they're opportunistic. They tend to eat more insects when they're children. Um, so the parents, when they're foraging for the babies to go bring food to the nest, they're going mm -hmm. to try and find insects because all that little extra protein helps the babies mm -hmm. grow up big and strong. Yeah. Um, but another interesting thing that they do is that during the summer months and in fall they will grab food and not immediately eat it and they will bring it back to their roost and they will store it there for when you know food might not be as plentiful so you know kind of you know that's that shows intelligence smart little guys who can actually think and plan ahead and know hey i shouldn't just eat everything i can find now because i might need it later yeah very clever and then uh, another thing that ornithologists have found is that the crest on their head can kind of be a signal of their mood. So, huh. you know, if it's like up and forward, like really far forward, that might be a more an aggressive stance. If they're mm. scared and trying to hide, it flattens down and goes back. Um, but they also tough it up and really poof it out when they're doing their mating rituals and stuff. So you can mm -hmm. really, their, their crests really move around quite a bit. And you can tell a lot by... Uh, what that bird's feeling by the way that their crest is shaped. So that sounds pretty Very neat. cool. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the good news about these little guys is that their populations have remained stable. So they are a species of least concern, not endangered at all. Which Heck is yeah. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, what do I have to say about the bridal titmouse? I mean, it's just a cute little bird. How, I mean, how could you not love these little guys? <laughs> it's like... Are they super interesting? Do they have really cool, unique stuff or cultural significance? Not really. But, you know, they're one of the kind of birds that just makes being out in nature pleasant. So you can, mm -hmm. you gotta love them. What do, what do you think? I I definitely enjoy them. Uh, I I like that they are, they are tenacious little creatures that despite their size, they will do what they can to just keep surviving. And I like, uh, that they, the, the way that they adapt with like their mating and stuff like that. And that it's like kind of a communal, like the village takes care of everybody. So like some mm -hmm. male might, you know, take care of someone else's eggs, but it doesn't turn into like a, these aren't my eggs, kick them out of the nest kind of thing. It's like, they, they all take care of each other. And while unfortunately there are, you know, fairly plentiful losses, uh, because of just how much of their clutch that they have in the first place, there's not a, a fear of them going away, which yeah. I really, really like. It's like they're they're like, no, 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 we're sticking it out. We're we're going to be around, and while we may not be around for long, we're still going to be around. Yep, they're <laughs> they're adaptable little guys who seem to be doing quite well, and yeah, they do well in suburban areas as well as rural areas. Yeah, they just mm -hmm. need to, as I said. Uh, you know, if you're in the region where they are, build a nest box and you might have some of these uh, in there. So 
We got any... I do love their crests as well. The the <sighs> the facial markings and stuff like that are just incredibly pretty. Yeah, very pretty. I th I think these guys are prettier than their cousins, the Tufted Titmouse. I like yeah. them a lot. Mm -hmm. And and Tufted Titmouse are really cute. Although I still think of all the tits, uh, the long-tailed tit is the cutest one. Though there's those little ones that you always see in like Japanese stuff where they're like pure white and then they have this like that little two little white dots for eyes and the little like triangle beak. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I see. Yeah, I, I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Long-tailed tits are just adorable. But I think mm -hmm. tits in general might be the cutest birds. Not the prettiest birds, but I think but they're definitely the cutest. The cutest. They're just mm -hmm. cute little guys. Just want to mm -hmm. just want to give them a little hug. Mm -hmm. Just be like, you're cute. I would say a peck <laughs> on the cheek, but coming from a bird, that could actually be painful. I was about to say, just a, like a, a, a gentle nuzzle of appreciation. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to call this bird of the day done mm -hmm. and head back on over to the studio.